today I've brought you to one of my favourite venues. Uh, we're at Viaduct Fishery. This is a spring lake. It's a lake that I sort of grew up fishing really, but throughout the winter it's a venue that we fish quite a lot. There's a lot of silverfish matches. Um, we've also got the Viaduct Winter League here. And even when it gets really cold, you know, you're only going to get a few bites. This week in particular has been mega cold. We've had frost every night and you know, the catch results all around the country have sort of plummeted really. But looking at the water, it, it's, you know, it's really clear to be fair. And that's when the waggler comes into play. Obviously, during the autumn, you can catch you know, good pole weights, but as the color drops out, fish sort of back, up, back off a little bit, shadow of the pole sort of spooks them in the clear water and the waggler is really a winning method this time of year. So today I'm gonna to show you sort of my, how I would approach this venue on the waggler. So when would I opt to fish a waggler? Obviously today it's a flat calm day. The wind's not gonna affect my presentation, but because the water's clear and it's flat calm, that's when they sort of back away from the pole. Um, skimmers especially and roach that wouldn't sort of sit under the pole, under the shadow of the sun sort of thing. And you might catch a few straight away, but then they'll back off. And that's when I like to fish a waggler. There are times, however, when it's maybe not quite right. Maybe the, the wind's too bad to get a good presentation. And by fishing a waggler then, and feeding beyond the pole, pole line, it means that you're sort of affecting your chances of catching on the pole. So that's maybe when I wouldn't look to fish the waggler. But today, I think they're going to back off the pole and they'll be in that open water, especially with it being so clear. You know, in the winter months, they do back off into the middle of the lake. Um, you know, away from all the dis disturbance. So that's that's when I fish the waggler, really. On this lake in particular, I've had some awesome days on the waggler. Um, I've had I've had skimmer weights up to 97 pound in the middle of winter before. But obviously, I'm not expecting that today, but you know, there are plenty of roach near as well. I've had 30, 40 pound weights on the waggler, fishing casters, and there's some nice quality fish if you, if you can get amongst them. Um, now we've had a few frosts, you tend to find that sort of the smaller fish don't sort of feed so much and you get sort of proper quality roach and hybrids feeding. So hopefully today we'll have one of those days where we can catch you know a few roach and maybe get amongst some bigger fish. There are the odd big roach and hybrids here so hopefully we'll get amongst some decent fish. So today I'm going to opt to feed sort of two lines really. I'm going to feed casters where I can comfortably feed it to so get a nice sort of group in. And then beyond that, I'm going to fish corn. Corn's a great bait. You know, you might not think of it as a silverfish bait if you like, but it can pick out them bigger skimmers and, you know, it can really boost your weight. Here in particular, skimmers sort of go two, three, maybe even four pounds. So if you can get sort of half a dozen of them and a few small fish early, that's, you know, a match winning bag. Obviously, f throughout the session, I'll be mainly fishing the castle line and then hopefully later on as the light sort of drops and the skimmers start to feed a bit I'll look to fish that corn line just out the back of the back of the swim a bit further out and hopefully catch some bigger fish I've also got an island in front of me as well so that island is a screaming feature of carp even in winter especially here because it's such an old lake it's actually quite deep by the island it's you know only sort of a foot shallower tight in and undercut so carp tend to hug that all year round really so it's worth a cast or two tight in um, and hopefully we might snare the old carp too so that's how i'm going to approach today there are limitations with it however um, if i had water deeper than sort of eight nine foot then i'd look to fish a slider instead um, but obviously even in that depth you could fish shallow up in the water with a conventional waggler still today i've got sort of between four and five and a half foot, so that's ideal for a straight, straight and insert waggler. Next thing I'll to consider is swim choice and where I can feed. Um, obviously it's pointless you know, trying to push yourself with a catapult when it's not going to be accurate. You might as well fish where you can fish comfortably. Um, today I'm just going to fish where I can comfortably fit, feed casters and then again with the corn line. Um, it would be pointless for me trying to feed towards the island because I wouldn't be able to feed it accurately and it would go everywhere. But I am, however, going to still fish there 
and maybe try and mug the odd fish with my single hook bait because I think that's where they're going to sit and just my hook bait falling in amongst them hopefully I might nick a few carp. So to keep so to keep things simple I've only set two rods up I've got one for the caster line with a nice soft action on the rod you know hopefully we'll, we'll catch some roach and silverfish on that line I've got one for the corn line and I'm using the same rod to cast past tight to the island and hopefully mug the old carp. So I'm going to run you through the float choice and type of wagglers I use. First of all, I really only use peacock wagglers. I know they're quite hard to get hold of, um, but if you, if you look, you can still find them. I'm sure most people have got them in the box anyway. The reason I use them over, say, a plastic waggler is they just seem to fish so much nicer. They cock quicker, they cast nicer, you know, they cast straight and I just love using them. They just work so much better than, you know, a hollow plastic waggler. So there's a few different types. Um, I'll run you through them. It's worth mentioning as far as straight and insert peacock wagglers go, I only really use unloaded floats. Um, the main reason for that is, well, a few reasons actually. The cast much nicer. There's not that sort of wobble through the air and when they hit the water they seem to cock much quicker they're not diving down and possibly spooking fish you're in straight fishing straight away and you know that's better for fishing on the drop really you'd be, uh, be able to see bites much quicker and the floats not bobbing around all over the place and um you know unloaded floats are just my favorite floats for so first of all there's the insert waggler it's exactly what it says it is it's a thinner piece of material inserted in the top of the waggler and that's going to aid sensitivity. It's also brilliant for catching on the drop because you're going to be able to see each dropper shot as it falls and maybe the odd lift bite too. It's going to be great for that castle line today. So that's what I'm going to use on that line. My next choice is an insert again, but with a hollow tip. And you can see by looking at that, it's really visible. That's great for fishing a bit further out. And today I'm going to be fishing that on my corn line. You know, the sun's going to catch that really well and in winter light conditions will be really poor so by having that hollow bristle it really stands out next choice is a, just a straight peacock um, obviously that's got a thick top good for rivers and you know dragging line on the bottom um, we're not going to be doing that today but you might however need a thicker top if the wind gets up and you can't quite see it and also it's good for casting tight to the island when you need a float to you know, cock quickly, but you can get away with a thicker top. And it's worth mentioning that these cock far quicker than, say, an insert. Um, so that's good for, you know, casting tight to the island like I might be doing today and catching your carp on the drop. So now I'm going to show you the two rods I've got set up today. First of all, for my caster line, I've got a 12 foot rod. This has got a really soft tip. It's actually an old. 12 foot super feeder sadly they don't make them anymore but it's perfect for catching roach and you know silverfish at short range 12 foot is you know, ideal for me on commercials you haven't got that depth say maybe six seven foot when you'd use a 13 foot waggler um, it's more sort of four or five foot and that's perfect for a 12 foot waggler and this one's especially nice because it's got a really soft tip so with that rod, I've got a three pound main line. That's going to aid casting. Um, it's only 016 diameter. It's a three pound power max. On this rod, because I'm going to be changing the depth regularly, um, you know, maybe shallowing up to hit bites and vice versa, I've actually got a thicker piece of line, a shot leader if you like, just to give me that bit of durability when I'm moving the float all the time. So I've actually got a six pound small section probably five foot or so so i can slide this up and down and you know be safe in my mind that i'm not going to break break the float as i'm you know moving up and down in a hurry so my waggler choice on this rod i've opted for a two and a half aa solid tipped insert so it's going to be really sensitive and be, be able to see those bites on the drop um, and it's ideal for the distance i'm fishing nice and comfortable and not sort of over casting if you like um because that's when it might cause a few tangles it's you know comfortable for that distance i've also got um you might notice they look a bit different from normal shot they're actually caruso non-toxic weights um the reason i use them obviously an aa is a a 0.7 gram 
and a SSG is a 1.3. So these fill the gap in between um, and it saves me from you know, maybe using two AA and having loads of small shot to make up that weight. It fills the gap in between so I don't have to use loads of shot on the line. So those two shot are locked on to a piece of 1.2 silicone and I do that with all my floats now. It, it protects the line um, and I've done it for years and it's not going to damage your line by using that harsh non-toxic shot straight on your line and I wouldn't really recommend it really without any silicone. Moving down the rig I've got a mini match swivel about half depth um, and that's going to eliminate any tangles it's really important to use swivels when you're using natural baits and you know, light hook lengths it stops them twizzling up and it stops tangles. So below that I've actually got quite a long hook length it's two foot long and that's going to give me that sort of natural slow fall, obviously because I've got this thick main line. Um, and I've got two foot of, it's actually 09 power line. And I've got two number 11 shots spaced, spaced evenly below it. It's just give me that slow fall again. And they'll actually just about big enough to register on the float as it's dropping through. So hook choice, I've got a size 16 black gamma. The reason I'm using this is because it, it's a nice lightweight silverfish hook. It's ideal for roach, but importantly, because I might be hooking into the odd big perch, I like to use a straight point hook. And I think that penetrates their tough mouths a bit better than maybe a curved, curved hook. Um, so that's you know, the main reason I use it really, just in case I hook a big perch. Um, and if I start bagging, I can put in you know, a curved SFL hook, which is you know, still a lightweight hook but maybe a bit more of a bagging hook than a black hammer. So my second rod is from a calling line. This time I've actually got a 13 foot superior float rod, the lighter version, a three to 10 gram. And that's gonna be ideal for hooking into them big skimmers. But also that extra length is gonna be ideal for casting tight to the island. And it's plenty strong enough for bending into a big carp. The carp in there are probably averaging 10 pounds. So that's gonna handle that easily. I've actually got four pound line straight through this time. And then to my float choice, I've actually got a hollow insert waggler. And with this one, I've actually put a thicker insert over the top. I, I mess around with my wagglers all the time. I'm always cutting bits off and just trying to make them perfect, really. The insert was obviously that long and I've cut it short and put a thicker piece over the top. And that's gonna be ideal for, you know, casting a little bit further to the island like I will be today. Again, I've got two big shot either side of the float, a couple of number eight, so I can sort of, you know, if the wind gets up, I can take one off and fine tune it a little bit. So moving down the rig, I've actually got a quick change swivel this time. And the reason I've done that is so I can change my hook length quickly. One hook length is gonna be a hair rig for carp. Obviously I prefer to do that when I'm fishing tight to the island and targeting carp on their own. For skimmers, I prefer to hook corn, so for that I'm going to use 010 power line to maybe a 16 SFL hook so I can just hook the corn straight on. For skimmers I think that's better. Um, hooks contained within the hook bait and I think they're more likely to take the hook as well. You know they're not going to feed sort of as aggressively as carp and they've got smaller mouths so I prefer to hook the corn for that. And now I'm going to talk you through how I plumb up. So as I've said, I'm fishing two different rods today. I've got one for the corn line, which I've already plumbed up. And what I've done, I've marked the depth on my rod. I've got my hook and the hook up in the bottom. So it's nice and accurate. And I've got a reference point for that corn line where I'm gonna be able to comfortably feed and it's that deep there. What I've also done is plumbed up tight to the island. I've given myself another se second mark, it's about a foot foot shallower and what I could do then is I could swap between the two really accurately and um, not worry about what depth I'm fishing at. So I've already plumbed that up. What I'm going to do now is plumb up my caster line and I'm going to show you how I've done that. So at the moment I've got a, I've got a two and a half AA waggler that I'm going to fish with. All I'm going to do with that is take that off. Obviously I've got a float adapter so I can swap and change. I'm going to put on an even heavier float. And what that's going to do, it's going to undershot the float. It's probably going to sit, sit about that far out. 
and that's going to allow me to climb up a lot more accurately than a, a properly shotted slope. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to put a plummet on. I'm going to put an SSG shot on instead. I find I can plumb up much more accurately with that. I'm not making loads of disturbance with a big heavy plummet. So if I run you through it, that's sort of the rough depth at the minute that I expect it to be at. I'm just going to cast the, the area I'm going to fish. So that's actually sunk. So I need to add a bit more depth to that. So I'm going to move the float about four inches, see what happens. Go a bit deeper. So that's still sunk. So I'm still fishing too shallow. Add another six inches, see what happens. Hopefully that'll be on the bottom. Yeah. Oh yeah, so that's just touching bottom there. I'm actually gonna see if it's a nice flat bottom. I've got a feeling it, it goes deeper to the right, so I'm gonna cast to the left to see see what we're dealing with. So now that's that float sticking a bit more out, so it's obviously shallower to my left. To be fair, I probably want to be targeting the deeper water, considering it's quite clear and bright. So I'm just going to check that, that other spot. I'm gonna, that's probably about two inches over depth there. So I'm gonna fine tune it a little bit. Take an inch off, see how that sits. That one went to the left, and I know that's shallow. And try to the right again. bit awkward to cast but if you get the knack of it you can get it to land straight. So that is only just showing like a pimple so I know that's roughly dead depth and that's the sort of area I want to fish so a few more casts just to check it's nice and flat and that'll probably do but it's always worthwhile taking your time when you're plumbing up. So that's a bit shallower there. So it's, it's obviously getting deeper to my right. But like I said, it's always worthwhile taking your time plumbing up. Sometimes I'll spend 40 minutes plumbing up a waggler line and I might have three different marks on my rod for different areas of the swim. But today I know I'm gonna fish that one spot. So at the moment, I'm sort of happy with the depth on that area. So what I'm going to do is take that shot off, put the hook on the uh, hook up, I'm going to mark the depth so I've got a reference point and then obviously as the session goes on I can shallow up and if I want to drop down on the bottom I can go back to my mark and I know I'm fishing nice and accurate. So that's how I plumb up. Right, so let's start fishing. I'm going to start on my cast of line to begin with, um, just to see if we can get a few roach to begin with. Um, I'm going to start on the bottom, just touching. And I'm just going to work my way into it. I'm just going to feed a dozen casters at a time and just see if we can get any bites to begin with. So a single caster on the hook. Let's see what happens. So you're a bit of breeze, so I'm going to sink the line, make sure it's all sunk, so it's not drifting out of place. I'm just going to feed over the top of the float, see what happens. You can see my hook bait dropping through now. First dropper, then the next dropper. Oh, 
something on the drop straight away. So that's a good sign. Small fish. Well, fairly small. It's a nice size roach. So we get one of those every put in. It's not going to take long to get a weight, along with a few bonus fish. Hopefully, as the session goes on, we'll get a few bigger roach and maybe the odd hybrid on this line. I might have to shallow up if there's a lot of fish in the peg. Um, but it, I, won't, I won't try that unless I start missing a few bites and then I'll shallow up and try and hit them. And quite often you find that the bigger roach and bigger hybrids, you'll only catch them. Ooh. You'll only catch them off the bottom. So I've missed a bite on the drop then. I'll have another chuck and if it keeps happening, I'll shallow up. At the moment, just see if we can get a few bites dropping right through. So it's just dropping through now. Ooh. There's obviously quite a few fish feeding. Surprising really, considering it's so cold. Well, it was last night. Ooh. A little skimmer, that one. So even though that that rig's full depth and fishing on the bottom, that fish was on a drop. So it makes me think that fishing off the bottom might be the way to go today. So I overcast to begin with, so I'm not disturbing the swim. And I've dragged it back into the feed and sinking my line at the same time. There's a bit of a breeze coming across. So just make sure it's you know in one place and quite often you can see the line between the, your rod and the float and just by giving it a flick it makes sure that it's completely sunk <laughs> and often twitching it like that gives you a few bites as well in fact I missed a couple of bites on the drop now and two casts i'm going to shallow up about Probably about eight inches off the bottom and see what happens. See if we connect with some of those bites. We might even get a few bigger fish as well. Bigger roach hybrids. Single caster. Overcast, pass my feed, bring it back in, sink in the line. Feed over the top of my float. Dropping through now, just see the shot settling. Ooh. So I hit that bite, so it's worth shallowing up. Seems like a better roach as well. Is it a little hybrid? A little hybrid, I think. It's a nice fish. So if we keep going off the bottom, we might catch the odd better fish. There's, there's the odd sort of pound, pound and a half hybrid, even two pounds. Perch, we might catch on this line. We might catch them off the bottom as well. They like a bait dropping through. Make sure to keep the feed going in. There's a bit of a breeze coming through. Ooh, missed that bite. Might be worth shallowing up again in a minute if I keep missing bites. If I feed in now, hopefully I'll catch a fish before that bait drops through and it'll be ready for my next cast. Oh, 
I missed that bite, so I'm going to shallow up now. I've missed a couple of bites in a row. Shallow up another four inches or so, see what happens. Keep the feet going in. Also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed a bit of corn past this line and on my corn line, and hopefully later on in the session, I might catch some big skimmers over it, maybe the old carp. So I've shallowed up that, and I've got a bigger fish straight away. So it was obviously the right thing to do. Low, steady pressure. I'm not going to rush it. Fish like this in winter, a bonus really. Ooh, some perch. I said we might get some perch. Nice little dumpy fish. Nice bonus fish today. They're a nightmare for coming off these fish. Bony, really bony mouths. But we caught that one. Let's see if we can catch some more. So I've upped the feed a little bit as well now. It's obviously fishing, well, the fish are feeding quite well, so hopefully by upping the feed, trying to find the right depth that they're, they're feeding at, should keep some bites coming. I'm also casting regularly as well. Obviously that's, that's gone through without a bite, but if I keep casting and keep that hook bait dropping through, more likely to catch fish than a static hook bait just hanging there. It just grabs their attention a bit more. You just find you get more bites if you keep dropping the rig through. Just like fishing a pole really, a little caster rig. You know, if this was a pole line, you'd be fishing, what, 412 Chianti, just spraying casters, but obviously with the water being so clear, um, the waggler's proven better. Another roach. A little skimmer. Keep getting them wrong. Another nice quality fish. Miss that bite. So that's gone through without a bite, so I'm just going to twitch it and move that up bait again. Hopefully we'll get a bite on the second drop through. Duck's in the way, can't see my float. Right, I'm going to try another cast, keep dropping the rig through. A bit of corn going through as well. 
and that other line. Twitch. Ooh. Hello. That's a better fish. So shallow nuts, obviously, the way to go at the moment. As the feed goes in throughout the day, though might find that some skimmers move in it might be worth dropping down on the deck as well this feels a big fish awesome for this time of year favorite style of fishing oh it's another perch Ooh. look at that these fish love it when it gets a bit cold and clearer. You find you catch these proper great big perch. Some of them in here are about three or four pound. But that one's not quite so big, but still a decent fish. Keep the bait going in. Might be another one there. Sun's just gone in as well now, so we might find that bigger fish like that start to feed. When it's really bright and clear, it's, uh, it can be a bit difficult. Just give that another twitch. Keep the feed going in. Keep the other line fed with corn as well. Ooh. Might be his brother. Just keep it steady, I'm not going to rush it. Perch like that before, a bit of a nightmare for coming off, so it's, it's worth just taking it steady, steady pressure. Let's see what this one is. Oh, another perch. Probably a few about. A bit angry. Mm. Another nice dumpy fish. It's not going to take long to build the weight if I keep catching them. They're obviously feeding act actively and looking around from catching them off the bottom as well. All right, keep some corn going in on the other line for later on. And keep the casters going through. Oh, it might have been a duck.
a few little things that I think are really important is first of all a nice all-round catapult this one's got a strong elastic so I can you know, ping the corn line at quite a distance quite a strong elastic um, but also I can use the same catapult just for my caster line um, and I can group them quite nicely with, with just the one catapult doing two jobs really so and also worth taking plenty of spares because if you are feeding a lot you know you do um, you do wear them out and break the elastic now and again but these these have served me well for quite a long time the other thing to mention I've got a couple of lantern nets set up one's a little 18 inch ideal for silvers and I've got a four meter landing net handle on it just in case I look something bigger but also I've got a, a, tw a 20 inch um, just a bigger net just in case I do work a bigger carp and there are loads of well they go up to like 20 pound in here but if I work one it's probably going to be 10 pounds so you know I need a big net to handle that so that's just a couple of things that can make a big difference at the end of a match so the silverfish sport has been brilliant today and to be fair I haven't really looked that often on my island swim um, I've just had the sort of occasional chuck every 40 minutes or so just just to see if there's one there and uh, towards the end of the day now I've just chucked out to have a look and it's buried straight away um, just hair rigged piece of corn quite tight to the island as well I've got a fairly decent cart a bit small for this lake but I'll see if this was a match it would be worth having a chuck every every sort of half hour 40 minutes that's a nice fish nice pretty little mirror anyway just to have a, a look at see if there's one there quite often if you leave a swim alone and you'll get one first chuck you might not get another fish but um it's always just worth keep trying it especially on like a winter league match or something it's a nice pretty little mirror that one see not not one of the specimens that live in it great big specimens that live in here but um welcome on a winter's day so although i've had a brilliant day fishing casters catching loads of big roach even the old big perch and big hybrid this corn line that i've been feeding hasn't really hasn't really produced for me but on other days it can be lethal you could you could feed it all day and go until the last hour catch sort of six fish and that could win you the match at the moment I'm, I'm sure there's one or two fish out there i'm getting the odd indication but we're starting to run out of light now um, which is typical really the skimmers start to feed just as the light drops and um we've sort of run out of time really but oh he says <laughs> there's one but um it might be a roach actually on another day it, it could be lethal but it's just been a bit too bright and a bit too clear for it the, the proper skimmers haven't fed but the other species have this one's a little hybrid on the corn nice fish to finish on anyway and to be fair it's been a brilliant day proper winter fishing <laughs>